the first miracles of our Lord Jesus Christ during his childhood. The first miracles of Jesus as a child are vividly described in the Gospel of the Apostle Thomas, which belongs to the so-called Apocrypha Gospels, a passage from which follows in a faithful translation. I, Thomas, the Israelite, have always longed to make known to my non-Israelite brothers the childish miracles, that, that is, the, the miracles um, during child's uh, boyhood, performed by our Lord Jesus Christ, living bodily in the city of Nazareth, where he went when he was five years old. Here, then, are the childhood uh, miracles of Jesus. One day, when it had rained, Jesus came out of the house where his mother lived and was playing, digging holes in the ground, which were filled with water from the rain. Then he said to the waters, I want you to become pure and virtuous. And immediately the waters of the pits cleared of the mud and became gargles. They became pure. Now, I want to tell you here what I have seen uh, uh, during um, what, what, with my own eyes. Um, I even made a video on this, but I, I think I've lost it. But anyway, uh, when we baptize a child in the Christian Orthodox Church, the uh, waters of the baptismal font are holy. It's holy water. So we can't wash it off under in the, in the sink, you know, or in, a, in the laundry. We have to take that, uh, the, the uh, clothes, the baptismal clothes and the towels and everything, and wash them in the ocean water or running water, like a river that empties in the, in, the, in the ocean. Well, I went to an ocean. I went to Marathon Beach, and I washed the waters there of the, um, one of the uh, children that we baptized in our little church of St. Sosa in the shanty town of Capota in Athens, Greece. <clears throat> and what I noticed was uh, the Marathon Beach has a very, very, very fine sand. It's beautiful. It's very good for children because it's very shallow. You, you walk out like... I don't know, 500 feet in order to get, go up to your waist. So uh, the sand there is very, very fine. So the minute you walk into the, the uh, water, which is quite nice and clean, uh, the sand comes up, okay? Uh, so what, what I noticed when I put the baptismal clothes on the water is that the sand immediately cleared up and went onto the ground, you know, onto the... Uh, bottom of the of the wa the ocean water the sea water uh, as if it wasn't fine as if it was like rock okay it just sank and uh, this was going on and the other thing that happened was when i crumpled up the towels and the and the um, baptismal clothes crumpled crumpled them up in balls they stretched out on the water by themselves as if four uh, uh, invisible beings were pulling the ends of the clothes, of the of the uh, towels and the clothes. They would uh, spread out perfectly on the surface of the water. And underneath, the sand was clear. Uh, 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 along the sides, outside of the clothes, though, the sand was ticked up and um, permeating throughout the water of the sea. The other thing I noticed, that there's little tiny invisible little uh, fish, not invisible, but clear, see-through little tiny fish about uh, ha half the size of my, our, you know, our forefinger, and um, they don't bite you or anything, they're just there. And I noticed that the fish were outside of the area where the clothes were stretched, and uh, the sand was uh, clear from the water, from the seawater, and they, they were outside of, the, of the, that area looking in. So even the fish knew that something was going on. This was going on for about 45 minutes. The only thing I can, at that time, thought of doing is I noticed that something of a miracle was taking place. But it's not just with me. This happens with everyone that takes the Christian Orthodox baptismal cloths and washes them in the sea. Uh, they all notice this. So uh, the only thing I could uh, think of saying was, May the Holy Spirit's power go to the whole world with this water that circulates around the whole world. 
this was going on for about 45 minutes and then after this oh the the claws also would not sink for 45 minutes they were not sinking okay even though they were wet they were they were not sinking uh, and then after that they started sinking and the sand was going into the water and even onto the clothes after 45 minutes so that's the miracle i wanted to tell you but now concerning um uh, uh the mud the uh, the clear of the the clear water of the mud the mud puddles muddy puddles as uh, peppa pig calls them now again passing by a child of the clerk anna wielded a stick of willow branch broke the pits with it and the water poured out and then jesus turned and said to him disrespectful why did my pits bother you and you spoiled them before you finish your way, you will be as dry as a stick you're leaning on, he said. Indeed, where Anna's child was walking on the road, he suddenly fell down and, and uh, the other children who were playing with him went and told his father. Anna immediately uh, ran but found the child deceased. So he left complaining against Joseph about the harm that Christ had done to his child. Then little Jesus from the clay of the pits began to mold playing little sparrows but it was saturday and a child went and told joseph this as well when joseph heard this he went out and said to jesus why do you do this my child and you desecrate the sabbath day jesus did not speak to him but cast his eye on the ground sparrows and said to the sparrows and said to them fly and go and imitate me in your life indeed he did not keep his word and the sparrows flew into the air and when Joseph saw this, he marveled greatly. After a few days, Jesus was passing through the city, and a child threw a stone and hit him on the shoulder. Jesus turned and said to him, You won't save to go your way. You won't be saved to go your way on, on your path. And immediately the child fell down and died. Those who happened to be nearby and saw what happened lost it and said, But what is this with this child? Where does it come from? And what he says is immediately done. They went and found Joseph, so they threw themselves at him. Said Joseph, you cannot live with us in this city. If you want to stay, teach your son not to curse, because he curses our children and they die. And whatever he says is done immediately. Then Joseph called Jesus aside privately and began to advise him, "What are you doing with your guises? You enrage the whole world, and they hate and persecute us." But Jesus answered him. I know that what you say is me to me are not your words. Others made you tell me, but in front of you I will be silent, but they will find what they deserve. And immediately those who accused him were blinded. Those who saw what had happened were greatly afraid and puzzled and said that every word of this child, good or bad, was miraculously answered. And Joseph, as if he saw this new miracle that Joseph did, got up from the stool he was sitting on, and grabbed the ear of Jesus, who was standing before him, and pulled it hard. Um, Leave me enough of what you've done to me, Jesus said. Nearby was a teacher named Zacchaeus. This Zacchaeus heard what Jesus said to his father and marveled, a child to give such answers. After a few days, he approached Joseph and told him that this child was agnostic. In other words, uh, he knew so much. He says, give Give him to me that I may teach him letters and every science and teach him to respect and honor his father, the elders, and to love his peers. So he took him with him and taught him all the letters from Alpha to Omega. Then Jesus looked into the eyes of the teacher and said to him, Hypocrite, since you don't even know Alpha properly, how do you teach others Beta, Beta, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta? And these are basically the same words used in the Aramaic language, Aleph, Beta, Gamal, Delta. Now, teach Alpha, he says, first, and then you, you'll be, you will be able to teach Beta. And he started to shut up the teacher, telling him correct Alpha rules. When the teacher heard these teachings about Alpha, he was amazed and said to those present, Ah, what happened to the unfortunate? Trouble, I put my head with this child, whom I took to teach. Take him back, Brother Joseph, I beg you. Take him back, for I cannot bear his stern look and listen to his words. This child can't stand the ground. This one can handle fire, which womb gave birth to it, and which 
Rump nourished it. I don't know. Alas, what happened to me? How can I compete with him in knowledge? I thought I had a student and I put a teacher on, on top of my head instead. I will remember what I have been through, my friends, forever. I am old and defeated by a child. This misery will eat me up. Everyone will tell me that a child shut my mouth and I don't know what to answer. Therefore, Brother Joseph, please take the child home. This child is something great and wonderful or God or an angel. What can I say? I don't know. The Jews were confronting Zacchaeus and then Jesus laughed in his heart and said to him, I am sent from above to call people to turn their eyes and their hearts upward as I was commanded by the one who sent me to you. He did not spare his word and immediately those who he had struck with his words were resurrected and healed and since then no one dared to anger him for fear of harming him. A few days later little Jesus was playing in the sunroom of a house with another neighborhood with other neighborhood children. One of these children suddenly fell out of the sun bed below, uh, not the sun, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> like a veranda. Uh, it's what we call a, we would call a veranda, okay, uh, where you would uh, sit and, and uh, take in the sun in winter. So one of those children suddenly fell out of this uh, veranda and was left on the spot. As soon as other children saw it, they all left it in fear and Jesus was left alone. The parents of the child who was killed then ran and accused Jesus of being silent. He threw their child under the, uh, uh, off the veranda. Then Jesus said to them, I did not do that, but they persisted. Jesus also uh, jumped from the... Uh, Veranda unharmed and stood near the child's corpse, crying aloud, Zenon, that was the dead boy's name, get up and say, did I throw you down? And the boy who immediately was resurrected stood up and answered, no, my Lord, you did not throw me, but you resurrected me. And all were amazed at what they saw, and the parents took their child, praising God and worshiping Jesus. After a few days again, someone was chopping wood in a corner and an axe slipped out of his hand and fell and hurt him in the leg. The unfortunate man from the blood that flowed from the wound died shortly. His people raised their voices. People ran and Jesus went there with the others. Pushing, he passed through the crowd, went to the dead man, took hold of his wound, and immediately his wound was healed. He then said to the man, get up now, chop wood and remember me. The crowd who saw what had happened worshiped Jesus saying, truly, the Spirit of God is in this child. When Jesus was six years old, his mother gave him a pitcher and sent him to the fountain to fetch water. You know, every every village, even in uh, Greece, some villages in Cyprus, uh, Italy, uh, every village in, uh, had their uh, what we would call their spring. You know, their 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 um, their groundwater or their spring or their little river water. So they would go to the, to the um, fountain to take water every day, to fetch water. So his mother gave him a pitcher and sent him to the fountain to fetch water. But there were people at the tap, and from the push, the pitcher hit somewhere and broke. Then Jesus took off his garment, made it into a sack, filled it with water, and took it to his mother. His mother, seeing this miracle, kissed her child and rejoiced within herself for the mysteries and miracles she would see him perform. When the sowing season came after two years, Jesus went with Joseph to sow wheat in their field. And while his father was sowing with a handful, Jesus took a grain of wheat and sowed it. And the seeds sprouted immediately and multiplied. And as if they reaped and threshed, they gathered a hundred ears of wheat, that is 3,000 ears from a single ear of wheat. Then Christ called all the poor people of the city to the threshing floor, gave them enough wheat and left over uh, for Joseph to take home. And Jesus was eight years old when he performed this miracle. Jesus' father was a carpenter, and at that time he made plows and yokes for plowing. But a rich man ordered him to make a bed for him, because one stick was shorter than the other, and Joseph did not know what to do. Jesus said to him, put two sticks down. Joseph did as the child told him. Then Jesus took hold of the shorter stick by the end, pulled it up, and brought it level with the other. 
As soon as his father saw this, he embraced him and kissed him, saying, I bless myself that God gave me such a child. Um, when Jesus saw the knowledge of his child, which increased with age, he thought not to leave him illiterate, but took and delivered him to another teacher. This teacher said to Joseph, because he had understood the child's knowledge and was afraid of him, I will first teach him Greek and then Hebrew letters. Jesus answered him, if you are a really good teacher, tell me all the rules of Alpha and I will tell you after Beta. The teacher became bitter and hit the child on the head. Jesus was hurt and cursed the teacher who immediately fainted and fell on his face. Then Jesus left and returned to his father's house. But Joseph was sorry for what had happened and told his mother not to let him go out of the house because those who anger him die. Sometime later, another teacher, a sincere friend of Joseph said to him, bring the child to my school, maybe with goodness I can teach him letters. Joseph answered him, my friend, if you have conviction, go for it. Then the teacher went with fear and respect to Christ, and, uh, Christ, and uh, Christ followed him with joy. So he entered the school with courage, and seeing a book on the lect lectern, he took it in his hands, but he did not read the letters that were in the book, except by opening it, opening his mouth, spoke out the Holy Spirit, spoke with the Holy Spirit, and explained the law to those who were there. The law with a capital L, the law of God. So a multitude of people gathered, and they all stood and listened, and wondered and admired the beauty of his teachings and the readiness of his answers. Toddler even to speak so nicely, they wondered. When Joseph heard this, he was afraid and immediately ran to the school, lest his teacher was also inexperienced. But as soon as the teacher saw him, he said to him, Come and make your son proud, Joseph, my brother. I took the child as a lesson, and he is full of God's wisdom and grace. In spite of it, then, in your house, because it does not, he does not need teaching. As soon as Jesus heard this, he laughed and said to the teacher, Because you spoke rightly and testified rightly, for your sake, the other teacher who fell dry will also be healed. And immediately the other teacher was healed. The other teacher who fell dry, in other words, who was deceased. One day Joseph sent his eldest son Jacob to the forest to cut wood, collect figs and bring them home. Jesus also went with James. Well, James, well, James, James is the English name for James. The English name for Jacob is James, by the way. Now, uh, I know because one of my sons is called Jacob. So, James. We actually, in English, we call him Jake. Okay, while Jacob was gathering Pyrgans, a viper bit him on the hand, and he recovered from the snake's venom. Then Jesus approached, blew on the bite, and immediately the pain stopped, the snake burst out, and Jacob was healed. So this is from uh, Jesus' first miracle in childhood, and... Uh, this is published, I've translated this from a Greek article from Strange Press. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. And as we said, it's from uh, the Gospel, the Apocryphal Gospel of St. Thomas. Merry Christmas. May God be born in your hearts and sit in your hearts, which is his throne. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box.